Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. We're sitting down to preview Rovers Trip to QPR on Saturday as Rovers take on a, new, a newly replenished QPR team with the appointment at Gareth Ainsworth. I'm sure we'll discuss them in this preview along with the team news, team selection choices, and predictions. So let's get into it. As you'll see, I'm joined by Mike and Scott. How are we doing today, Mike? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good, good, Scott. How are we doing? Yeah, I look a bit like death, but, um, but hopefully... Uh... It won't stop uh, us having a good chat about uh, Rovers and QPR. Yeah, so we'll start the preview like we always do, the previous match. And I'm glad we're coming on positive notes after a few tough weeks recently discussing uh, constant draws and maybe losses. Mike, I'll come to you first. What have you made of Rovers' last two matches, really? Back-to-back -back wins, backing up, obviously, two good points on the road. Yeah, obviously, it's fantastic to uh, to come out of February with a couple of wins, Um I just wish we'd had a few more goals. I think the one nil it's it's just too edgy for us. I'd I'd love us to actually have a game where we can just come into it, get a goal, boss the game, get another goal and, and just enjoy ourselves. It always seems to be just on edge. It seems to be the Rovers thing at the moment. Yeah, that Blackpool one, it was much more nervy than it should have been going into their final five, weren't it? I think Rovers dominated all the game but and we looked comfortable and it got to the 85th minute and I started to worry that you know maybe a goal will come in I've not worried too much this year when we've been leading but you know there are a few blocks in there a few bodies on the line but the three points is all that matters uh, Scott what did you make of just the general individual performances against uh, Blackpool did anyone catch your eye? I mean I think uh, I think we'll all we'd all have to admit that we're we're blind if we're not uh, seeing how far it Ainsley Purse has come in his time, Rovers. Um, the, there was a time when, you know, if if Thomas got injured, that, like I'd worry. Um, but you know, over the over the time that he's been in in net for us, um, it's it's almost like Thomas is still there. Do you know what I mean? It's like he's a, he's certainly stepped up and he's showing that he's showing that he's a he's a top top keeper yeah I think that's been a massive positive of, this, of the uh, recent performances Mark I just wanted to come to you about Ainsley Pears obviously goalkeeper for yourself uh, maybe not the level Ainsley Pears plays at but obviously still a pretty decent level what do you make of the change we've had from Pears because we spoke about JRC obviously having this turnaround in his career but so has Ainsley Pears it's only four weeks ago we're about to go on loan to Portsmouth so what do you make of the change in his performances and the confidence increase? I think that's that's nail on the head there, his confidence increase. You can tell that he's he came in, was it Norwich, I think he, he came in and, and he was just unreal. And you could hear a pin drop at Carrow Road when we were playing it, but you, all you could hear was him commanding his defenders and everything, his positioning was spot on and he's just moved on from there. Um, he just seems massively confident. He's coming out for balls, shots. He's he's holding them. You know, ones where you'd expect a goalkeeper at this level to be tipping around the post. He's making things look easy, and we didn't expect that. This is really unexpected. Um, he's comfortable passing it round at the back. I mean, yeah, you could possibly say that Kaminsky might not get his place back. Yeah, it's an interesting one, and one that I'll probably bring up close to the time when he's back, because that's the same as I am. You know, I'm a big fan of Kaminsky. Uh, I obviously had my thoughts on Ainsley Pears before, but he's gone on to prove, I think, everybody wrong who doubted him. Uh, well, that could change. We know it could change. We may be a mistake, but at the moment, we'll, uh, we'll really appreciate how well he's performing. And like you say, when Kaminsky comes back, it's going to be a battle. Like we've seen in a lot of positions recently. You know, Joe Ranky Costello coming in when Hayden Carter's had a really good couple of weeks. It's such a, you know, Sammy Smoddix touched on it midweek after the game, saying, well, we're not the biggest of squads, but people will compete for the place and there's still competition and you still feel forced to put the performance in. And ultimately, that's what's happening. And, you know, they'll make continue for Rovers. If we just take a look at QPR, obviously, the horse on Saturday. Recently sacked Critchley after a really tough run. I think it was one win in 12. They've won one in the last 18, I'm going to take a guess at, I think it is. So one in the last 18 wins. But Gareth Ainsworth comes in, obviously spoke in his press conference, so there's only two clubs in the left for QPR and ourselves. 
Mike, now I believe, according to Rick Sharp, it's the ninth time that Rovers will have faced a new manager or an interim manager this season. Is that worry of the new manager bounce there? Or do you think Rovers have shown it on enough occasions that we can still beat a side when they've actually got this new manager in? I'm worried about this one because I feel like QPR do have the quality to bounce and bounce quite well. Um, you know, obviously Gareth Ainsworth, people know that he's a Blackburn lad. You know, he's going to want to get his guys up for the first game, especially against us. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about this one. I mean, we've we've had a, quite a lot of 1-0 wins recently. There's quite a lot of 1-0 wins for QPR and Blackburn in previous results. I think this is going to be a real tight game. You know, we were just saying about how, you know, it'd be nice if we could actually go into a game and get two or three. I genuinely think this is going to be another tight game and I am concerned about this one. Yeah, I'm the same. I think it's... Uh... Loftus Shroud hasn't been the happiest hunting ground either for us, you know, in recent years. Last year's one nil loss there was possibly one of the worst games of Mowbray's era in terms of us actually putting any sort of performance in. I thought it was shocking, so not a place I enjoy going to. Scott, would we take a point now? Would you back my hand off now and just say thanks for the point and move on? Or you know, should we be going and thinking, you know what, let's go and get three? I think you wanna be you always wanna be looking for three points, obviously. But I think um, I think one of the biggest things about obviously this, this February month has been that we've been turning those losses into draws, and we've been doing it since the turn of the year. I think only only one loss, uh, only one loss since New Year, um, and I think if if you'd have said one loss since New Year before Christmas, you'd have, you'd have snatched your hand off. Um, so obviously you want to be one to win, but of, of course we'll take a draw. Yeah, I'm a, I'm in the situation where I'd bite you enough for a draw now. I just think get out of this month from beaten, and it's been a really impressive month for me, especially with the narrative surrounding the uh, the February slump and everything going on with that. So guys, let's discuss team selection issues. Obviously injuries are playing the part. Daniel Ayala should be out. Uh, Bradley Dak should be out. We're unsure on Brereton Diaz at the time of recording whether he'll be involved or not. We think he will. But obviously, it's a bit unsure given his uh, his knock on the Saturday game. So, Mike, I'll start with you. The first thing I wanted to discuss, not really team selection issue as such, but the back line with Harry Pickering out and Callum Britton at left back. Callum Britton putting a really good show in his net. Do you actually feel more confident with Britton at left back than Pickering? Because for me, I don't think he can put a foot wrong when he's played there. But obviously, Pickering, I still think he's a good player. I know he's scapegoated a bit sometimes. I just wanted to get your opinions, really, on uh, Callum Britton and Harry Pickering at left-back. Yeah, well, we discussed it with the JRC uh, situation, didn't we, about potentially putting Britton to left-back, and I was I was dead against it, said no, no, no. And then he goes and does that. So I'm obviously wrong on that front. I'd, I'd, I'd stick with, you know, what we finished with um, in the last game, you know, against Blackpool. You know, you may as well. He's got one of the match there keep him there. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned that man of the match role. I think one player though, perhaps unfortunate not to be up there, uh, not to get it, sorry, with Joe Rankin Costello, an incredible performance, played centre mid. Uh, he played up front at one part of the game where he was running the game in the 10 role as well. Scott, would you keep him at right back for now or would you maybe push him further, further forward? We know we've got options in this side. You know, you could put Hayden Carter right back, but Ash Phillips centre off maybe, or would you keep JRC at right back? I mean, I think you just said it yourself though. Like, um, obviously, I think no matter what we what we start with, we'll always have that ability to, you know, adapt to whatever situation we need. If we need to push him further, we can. If if, if we need him further back, then we can. Um, I'd I'd keep him at right back to start with, and then. Just see where we'll go from there. Yeah, I think that might be the right decision. We know that midfield's not the best for Rovers. Yeah, I think it's improving game on game. I think Buckley and Travis had a really good uh, game there last time. I'll just come back to you, Mark, as well. So the front four, Brewitt and Diaz might return. I think we discuss the front four quite regularly, but it seems to be the part of the team that's letting us down now, isn't it? Rather than early in the season when we could score and then maybe concede a few. 
What front four would you go for if Brereton is free? Does he come back in or does he stay on the bench for you? Okay, so so yeah, so I'm I'm really happy with how Dolan's been playing. I think he's a fantastic player. He does great work. He's passionate. He's just got an engine. He's feisty. I think he's your starter. Ben Brereton. I think it's risky. Um, we've we risked Dak and he got injured. You know, we've risked Ayala, he's got injured. We haven't got the squad to deal with this. So I, I'd stick Diaz on the bench. Don't rush him back. I feel like Dolan's got that under control. Uh, I think Sorba Thomas has had a fantastic start to his Blackburn career. I think he's looked great for us. Um, the the question still, Sam Gallagher. You know, he's six foot four. He's built, but he doesn't put himself about. He's not. He doesn't seem to want to do the work that a, a striker of his build should be doing. I think that's the, that's the one that we should be looking at. I thought Schmodix was okay. So I'd stick with Thomas Schmodix and Dolan. But the question's Gallagher. I mean, Dan, you, you've seen Leonard. Is Leonard the kind of player that can come in and do a job now? I think the Leonard situation is tough, mate. You know, Jack Vale's not had the best of time with the fans. I know he's not really scored the goals, but now there's Gallagher or Burton Diaz in recent months. But do you bring Harry Leonard in in a playoff race? I don't think you do. I think you give him the dead rubber games, if there are any at the end of the season. You let him have that chance to come into the side then, or you do it if we're in a proper injury situation. At the moment, I don't think you bring him in. I think Diaz will probably be back, uh, which also adds you know, a guaranteed spot in the squad, so I won't bring him in yet, but he's definitely one for the future one to maybe embed next season, depending on what league we're in, and depending on the situation in terms of incomings and outgoings. So let's just get into it, into the predictions. Obviously, a good part of the show, everyone enjoys it. The predictions are still running, so leave your prediction down below. But let's get into them. Scott, you first. All right, well, I'm going to go and predict a, another 1 0 win for others. And uh, I'm going to have it as John Buckley to score. And then, Mike, your prediction. Yeah, I'm pretty similar, to be honest. I'm thinking 1-0 win, um, hopefully to us. I'm going to say Dolan gets another one, uh, does a nice little backflip, and uh, we go home with the three points. Uh, I'll go for 1-0 Rovers. I think Rovers are going to nick a win. They might draw, you know, I'm going a bit bit optimistic, given the new manager for QPR and being Gary Fins. If I go 1-0 Rovers, Sam Gallagher ahead, or let's go for Gally to get back among the goals. But that's where we round off. Leave your prediction down below. Let us know all your thoughts on the team selection issues, the front four, the defence, JRC's position going forward. And we'll be back soon for a new video. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate the sport and we'll see you soon.